Starting off at number 10 now, Minecraft fans will be very familiar with this, the iconic creeper with its instantly recognisable shape, but did you know that it was all a bit of an accident? The creator of the game Notch was actually trying to create a pig for the game, but when he was coding it he got the height and the width of it mixed up and ended up creating this upright monstrosity. Now instead of throwing that away, he turned it green, made them explode and the rest is history. Coming in at number 9, a Reddit user by the name of Lycerius once posted a story in 2012 about how he has been stuck in the same strategy game of Civilization 2 for 10 years. New versions of the game have come and gone, but the guy has been obsessed with trying to win this one particular game where he was locked in a hellish nuclear nightmare in the year 3991. The ice caps have melted over 20 times and most of the land have become a radioactive wasteland after him and two other nations played by the computer computer were locked in a stalemate war that had been going on for 1700 years and none of them was strong enough to wipe the other one out. Thousands of users on Reddit came together to come up with ways to end the game for Lyserius. Even the creator of the game itself, Sid Meyers, was amazed at this guy's dedication to what users have now dubbed the Eternal War. Alright, next up at number 8. One of the core features of the Metal Gear games are the stealth mechanic and being sneaky in general, but this wasn't intentional at first. The original Metal Gear game actually ran on a computer called the MXX2, which was slow, really slow. It was so slow in fact that it couldn't handle lots of characters and bullets flying around all at the same time like other shooter games and would just crash. So they put in only a few enemies on any given screen with less bullets fired and turned it into the stealth game we know today. Moving on to number 7, each of the three playable characters in GTA 5 supposedly represent the three main types of players who play the game. Trevor represents the kind of player who just wants to cause chaos and as much damage as they can just because they can. Michael represents the long time players of the GTA series who stopped playing the previous game and were brought out of retirement like he was to play the new game. And finally Franklin represents newcomers to the GTA games. Just like Franklin plays within the rules of the criminal game to get rich, new players will tend to stick to the system of mission completing to get their money. At number 6, the chain chomps from the Mario games have appeared in a whole bunch of different games, all the way back to Super Mario Bros. 3 in 1988. But did you know they actually came from the Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto's childhood? He once described a traumatic experience as a child where a neighborhood dog chased him before being yanked back by a chain attached to its collar. That scary memory must have stayed with Shigeru long enough to turn it into the chain chomps we know today. Alright, moving on to number 5 now. Dark Souls has a very iconic video game name, but before settling on the word souls, they went through some pretty bad ideas as some names didn't really translate very well from Japanese. At first they were going to call it Dark Rings, presumably based on the original game's ring-like maps, before someone pointed out that Dark Rings is also a slang term for your anus. Yeah. Then they went back to the drawing board and came up with Dark Race, which was very quickly scrapped as having a potentially racist implication. Seems like Dark Souls wasn't just the best name they had, might have been the least offensive one too. Coming in at number 4, fans of the Halo series will be familiar with this character Cortana and how her iconic voice guided the Chi through many different storylines. You look nice. Thank you. But did you know that her voice is also the voice of Princess Peach from Mario? Yeah, Peach has got it. They're both done by voice actor Jen Taylor. Now she's been voice acting in a lot of stuff. Everything from Mario in the 90s to EverQuest, Left 4 Dead, Dota 2 and Destiny. But yeah, Cortana and Peach is still probably the most surprising. But it's a sign of a good voice actor. At number 3, at the beginning of Uncharted 3 there is a bar fight scene and for a quick second we get a tiny glimpse of a newspaper with the headline, Scientists are still struggling to understand deadly fungus. Now this is actually a reference to the next game that the company Naughty Dog were making called The Last of Us. Yes, that deadly fungus is actually the very same thing that causes the fungal brain infection that mutates humans into the infected. Next up at number 2, when the original Metal Gear Solid game was released in 1998, rendering games in 3D instead of the old fashioned 2D was still a relatively new thing for some game designers. Konami, the makers of the game, wanted a way to help them visualise 3D spaces 
and sizes and so they used Lego. Yeah, they would design entire levels and buildings out of the stuff. The creator of the game once told a story about how his son complained to his mother that dad plays with Legos all day. Chill out, he's busy making like one of the best games of all time. Get over it. Finally at number one, the video game Fold It is an online puzzle game about protein folding. Now it was released back in 2008 and three years later they introduced the player base to a real life problem where scientists were trying to figure out the crystal structure of the AIDS virus. It had been unsolved for the past 15 years. 57,000 players took part in the puzzle solving for this and they figured out the structure in just 10 days. Wow. So next time guys someone says video games are a waste of time, just tell them that. Starting things off at number 10, there is a piece of Super Smash Brothers fan fiction that is one of the longest pieces of writing in the English language. It was first published to fanfiction.net by a guy called Chris and has 221 chapters containing a whopping 4,061,216 words. Mental. That's about four times the length of the entire Harry Potter series. So if you're a fan of Super Smash Brothers and you have a few years to kill, you know where to go. Moving on to number 9, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is considered by some people to be the greatest video game of all time since it's released back in 1998. Now since then a lot of speedrunners, that's people who try to complete a video game as quickly as possible, have tried to get the fastest time on this game. The current world record belongs to a guy called Skater82297 who has completed the whole game in 17 minutes and 31 seconds using glitches, exploited by speedrunners. Now it's the fastest anyone has got from the start to the finish of the game in its whole 18 year history and nobody's sure if or when it will even be broken. Coming in number 8, when Tetris was first released for the PC in 1987 it actually came with a boss button. If you were playing Tetris at work when you probably should be working instead, hitting the escape key would bring up a generic looking spreadsheet to make it look like you were hard at work when really you're hardly working. At number 7 now, GoldenEye 007 is claimed by many to be the best James Bond video game of all time and perhaps even the best movie game ever made. But if you saw who made it, you might not have expected that. Out of the 10 developers who made the game, 8 of them had never worked on a video game at all. Now you might think this would make a bad game but clearly not and some people even think it helped them make such a good game because they weren't weighed down with expectations or confined to the right or wrong way of doing things. Pretty cool stuff. Moving on to number 6, now the video game Starcraft is obviously set in outer space. Many games were before and many games have been since but Starcraft holds the distinct title of being the first video game to reach outer space. A physical copy of the game was put on board shuttle mission STS-96 when it launched on May 27th 1999. Now this wasn't any accident either, it was put there by mission specialist Daniel T. Barry who is a massive Starcraft fan. Cheeky, I like it. Next up at number 5, these days you might think of Sony and Nintendo as big bitter rivals within the gaming market but did you know they actually had a secret child together? Well not an actual child but they once created a console together called the SNES CD. It was supposed to bring the power of the CD disc to the Nintendo system while giving Sony a way into the gaming market. About 200 prototypes of the console were made before the two companies fell out with each other over licensing rights. Nintendo went on to make the N64 and Sony went on to make their own console calling it the PlayStation. Moving on to number 4, a lot of you guys might recognize Cranky Kong. He's appeared in 19 games as Donkey Kong's grouchy granddad who offers tips to help his grandson along. But did you know that Cranky Kong is actually the original Donkey Kong from the first arcade game way back in 1981. Now to be honest if I spent trillions of hours throwing barrels at a small Italian plumber yeah, I'd start to get a bit cranky too. Coming in number 3 now guys, what does Hades, God of the Underworld from the God of War series have in common with Dr. Neo Cortex from Crash Bandicoot and Mr. Krabs from Spongebob? Well, they're actually all voiced by Clarence J. Clancy Brown III. That's his real name, they all have the same voice actor. I think he must get a new name every time he voices a new character because that's a crazy name. 
Next up at number 2, some of you guys might be huge fans of Batman Arkham Asylum. Everything looked great in that game, right down to Batman's cape. And it really should. Edos Interactive said they actually put just one guy to work on Batman's cape alone for two years. That's all he did. Just focus on the cape. It involved over 700 individual animations and sound clips. And I think he did a pretty good job. And finally at number 1, Pokemon fans will know the legendary bird Pokemon Ho-Oh and Lugia lived in the Bell Tower and Brass Tower in the second generation games. The towers are based on the Ginkakuchi and Kinkakuchi temples on the outskirts of Kyoto in Japan. You only have to take one look at the birds that sit on top of those towers to see where the inspiration for the Pokemon came from. Now, The story of the brass tower burning down in the game that causes Lugia to flee to the world islands is even based on the Kinkaguchi temple being burnt down in real life by a monk in the 1950s. But I still think Team Rocket has something to do with it. Starting things off at number 10, Now, if any of you guys have ever played the 1978 classic arcade game Space Invaders, you'll know that the more invaders you kill, the faster they descend upon you. Well actually this was an accident originally. When game designer Tomohiro Nishikodo was making the game, he found that the processor was able to render the graphics faster if there were less invaders on the screen, speeding it up each time. Now instead of redesigning the game to fix this, he liked it and he kept it in as an actual game mechanic. So next time any of you guys get frustrated at a video game speeding up every single level, yeah, you have him to thank for it. Moving on to number 9, the buttons on the PlayStation controller aren't just meaningless symbols. Sony originally intended them to mean something. The triangle represents a person's viewpoint, the square was meant to symbolize a map, the X means no, and the circle means yes. Now, Sony hoped that developers would incorporate this into their games, but Seeing as I'm telling you this as a bit of you know hidden trivia, you can tell it really didn't work out that way. Coming in at number 8, now it's pretty clear that a lot of Pokemon themes come from Japanese culture, but did you know that even the land itself is based on Japan? If you overlay the various game maps from generations 1 through to 4 over an actual map of Japan, you can see the designers based it all on the real life geography of the country. At number 7 now, tiny bit of a portal spoiler coming here, okay? You guys still with me? Good. Throughout the game series, we pick up clues that GLaDOS's genetic life form component is actually Cave Johnson's assistant, Caroline. Now, although it's not clear whether she agreed to have her consciousness uploaded to GLaDOS, it's become clear that her physical form seems to be the inspiration for the design. GLaDOS appears to be the robot version of a woman in a straitjacket being gagged and suspended from the ceiling. Wow. Try getting that image out of your head next time you play it. You know who I am! I'm the man who's gonna burn your house down! With the lemons! Moving on to number 6, the throat of the world is the tallest mountain in all of Skyrim. And if you get to the top of it, you will find a pickaxe called the Notched Pickaxe. Now this is thought to be a reference to Notch, the creator of Minecraft. As for the crafting part, well the Notch Pickaxe actually has a unique plus 5 bonus to smithing. Coming in at number 5, when Final Fantasy 7 was released in 1997 on the PlayStation, some people thought that the 3 separate CDs that were needed were a little bit too much, but it could have been a whole lot worse. The game was originally going to be released on the N64 console before developers realised it would require a whopping 13 separate cartridges to run. Wow! And imagine if you lost one of them, that would suck. Next up at number 4, did you know that all the boxes in Super Mario Bros were actually people at one point in time? The game's instruction manual says that when the Kingdom of the Mushroom People was invaded by the Koopas, they turned them into stones and bricks that you see throughout the whole game. Yes, especially the ones you smash. They were real people that you were smashing. You absolute monster. Actually so am I. Hypocrite. Moving on to number 3, the Game Boy has been one of the best selling consoles of all time and one of Nintendo's greatest success stories. But it wasn't made by one of their experienced development teams, it was invented by this man, Gunpei Yokoi, who worked a number of different jobs at Nintendo including being the janitor for their headquarters. One day the president of Nintendo found Gunpei tinkering with machine parts to make an extendable arm toy. He was hired, or a I guess rehired on the spot to start working on more electronic toys for Nintendo over the years until in 1989 he and his team released the original Game Boy. 
Coming in at number two, this is Evil Otto. This is the bad guy in the 1980 arcade game Berserk, and he's also the only known video game villain to have caused the deaths of real life people. Between 1981 and 1982, two teenagers who posted high scores at video game arcades died of heart attacks within minutes of finishing this game. That makes Otto's smile seem terrifying, if I'm honest. Really scary. And finally at number one, the 2001 game Black and White was all about the epic battle between good and evil. Now to help set the mood for the game, they took a list of the 200 most common names in America and if your profile name is one of them and you're playing the game after 2am, the game will whisper your name in the middle of the night. Apparently Dan is on there, but not Danny, so I think I'm safe, they're not gonna- Danny. Okay. Starting off at number 10, the Bowser you fight in the first 7 levels of Super Mario Bros. isn't actually Bowser at all. He doesn't appear until the final level. The others are all imposters, and you can reveal their true form for just a second by shooting fireballs at them just like this Goomba in World 1. Coming in at number 9, have you ever noticed that none of the crew from the original Star Fox game had real legs? Yeah, they were all robotic, or just you know metal looking things. Now, According to developers, they actually had their real legs amputated because with all the high speed and g-force that comes with flying, the blood might rush to their legs so hard that it leaves their brain and they would pass out. Yeah. They really, really thought that game through. Next up at number 8, any fans of the Elder Scrolls game will probably love the music behind it, but did you know that so does the infamous Kim Jong Un? That's right, in 2013, North Korea released a propaganda video that showed Obama and American soldiers engulfed in flames while the music from Oblivion played in the background. Did they honestly think no one would find out? Or did they just not care? And are they going to use Skyrim's soundtrack as well one day? I have many questions. Moving on to number 7, sorry to burst anyone's bubble here, but I just have to make sure everyone knows that the clouds and bushes in Super Mario Brothers are the same thing. Yeah, check it out, they're the exact same thing, just different colours, one's white, one's green. Now some people say to Nintendo, well done, good job on saving some game memory there, while others say, thanks for ruining my child. Nintendo, thanks. At number 6 now, there are about 800,000 copies of the official E.T. game buried in a landfill in New Mexico. Yeah, despite selling 1.5 million copies of the game, it was nowhere near the amount that Atari expected after they had ordered 5 million copies to be made. This game did so badly that it was one of the key factors in the video game crash of 1983 and the bankrupting of Atari. If you want to see just how bad this video game was, like I said, there's about 800,000 copies just sitting in the ground in New Mexico. Coming in at number 5, Luigi's name is a play on the Japanese word Ruigi, which means similar in Japanese. It's a reference to the similarities between the brothers Mario and Luigi, but by some insane cosmic coincidence, Luigi is also a well known Italian name, which is the perfect fit for the green Italian plumber. Next up at number 4, the rarest video game of all time is thought to be Gamma Attack for the Atari. Only a few copies of it were ever made, and now it's thought that just one single copy exists, and it's in the hands of video game collector Anthony Donado. It's been valued as highly as $50,000 before, but Anthony seemed to think it's worth a lot more than that. He once put it on eBay with a buy it now price of half a million dollars. Wow, for that price there better be some pretty sweet DLC or something. At number 3 now, the Sirena Beach level in Super Mario Sunshine is shaped like a GameCube controller, complete with the X, Y, A and B buttons, the C stick, the D pad and control stick and even the little start pause button. I wonder if that blew Mario's mind as much as it blew mine, because it blew mine. Coming in at number 2, the creepy school you see in the first Silent Hill game might look familiar to some movie fans because it's the exact same school as seen in the Arnold Schwarzenegger 1990 movie Kindergarten Cop. The posters on the walls matching up are just the tip of the iceberg. Some people think it's a cool nod to a favourite movie of the game developers, while others have come up with all kinds of crazy fan theories that tie together this feel good family movie with the horror game classic. Personally, I'll never be able to watch that movie the same way again. Ugh. 
And finally now at number 1, the Statue of Happiness in GTA 4 is an obvious take on the real life Statue of Liberty, but take a closer look at her face. That's the face of Hillary Clinton. Yes. If the side by side comparison isn't enough to convince you guys, then the coffee she is holding is said to be a reference to the hot coffee controversy, which was a banned mod for GTA San Andreas, which Hillary Clinton was so outspoken about and also suggested new regulations be put on video games. So this was kind of their way of getting back at her. Be careful guys, this is what happens if you upset game developers. You end up looking silly in a video game forever.